Today we're looking at gradient for both National 5 and Higher Mathematics. What we're going to cover today is we're going to cover the uh, formulae y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We're going to look at uh, tan theta equals the gradient. We're going to also look at parallel lines and perpendicular lines and we're going to touch very briefly on differentiation. Okay, so let's, let's just draw a box up here, okay? So let's start from here. Okay, and what I'll do is I'll draw the triangle up here. Okay, so from there to there. Okay, what we'll do is we'll get from here to here. And from here to here. Right, so what I have here is a triangle. It's a small right angle triangle, so I'll just draw the wee right angle in there. Okay, so normally what we've we've used before to work out the gradient is we work out what the vertical side is and we divide that by the horizontal or you remember it as V over H okay where this is a vertical and I can see that that's going to be 4 and this is a horizontal which is 2, 4, 6 so that's going to be 6 Okay, so if I was going to work out that gradient using this formula here, the one that we already know, what we'll have is we'll have 4 as the vertical, we'll have 6 as the horizontal, and if I simplify that fraction down by dividing top and bottom by 2, I'll get uh, 2 over 3. Now what that means is, remember, uh, the 4 over 6 means that when I move along 6 places in the x direction, I go up the way by 4 in the y direction. Simplified, it means that I go along 3 and I go up 2. So that's the way that works. Along 3, up 2, along 3, up 2. And that pattern would just recur all the time Okay, for that uh, gradient. Right, what we're going to look at next of all, we're going to look at uh, using coordinates. So say I name this point here, the point B. I'm going to call that the coordinates 6, 8. Okay? This point here will be my point A. And this point will be 0, 4. So 0 and 4 up. So that's that point there. So there's my two points. And what I'm trying to do is I'm going to try and look at a different way of working out the gradient using the coordinates. Right, so this point here, what I'll do is I'll call that my x, a. And that point there will be y, a. This point here will be my x of b. And this one here will be my y of coordinate B. Okay, so the way that I'm going to make this 4 up here, if I look at that vertical height that's there, the way that I can make that up is by looking at the y coordinate of B and subtracting the y coordinate of A. So that would be like 8 take away 4 would give me the 4. So that's like 8 take away 4. And quite simply what that would be is, all I've done is I've taken the y-coordinate of B and I've subtracted the y-coordinate of A. So y, YB minus YA. So that's how I work out that side there. When I look at uh, this side here, I can see that that's 6. The way I can work that out using coordinates is the XB, which is 6, subtracting the XA, which is 0. So the 6 is going to be made up of 6 take away 0, and the 6 was the x b, the, the x coordinate of the b point, and the 0 is going to be the x coordinate of the a point. So if I look at the gradient again, going back to the vertical over horizontal, and I'm going to use a letter for the gradient, I'm going to use the, the letter m, which you may have already seen. And what I can see is from this part here, I can see that the vertical side over the horizontal, I'm going to just change that now into a formula that looks like this here. So that was YB on the top minus YA. So that tells me the vertical height when I'm using coordinates. And the horizontal is going to be made up by XB minus XA. So the XB is the X coordinate of the point B and the x a is the x coordinate of the point a. Okay, so that gives me a, a bit of a different formula to use. But uh, what you'll normally see it as, 
we'll see it as the gradient, and it'll be the gradient of the line AB. What that's going to be equal to, and you'll just know it, is y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. And that's the way that you'll, you'll normally just use it. I've just put in the letters there to try and give you an idea where each of the values are coming from when I'm trying to work out the gradient. So let's work out the gradient just knowing these two coordinates. And even if we don't have a diagram, what we can do is we can work out the gradient from there. Right then, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute some values in. So y2 would be the 8. I'm going to take away the y1, which would be this point here, which would be the 4. I've then got my x2, which would be this point here, the 6. And I'm going to take away my x1, which is a 0. So what that should leave me with is 8 take away 4 gives me 4 on the top. 6 take away 0 gives me 6. Simplifying it down is 2 thirds. OK, so, so now I've got a method of working out the gradient when I'm just giving two points or two coordinates uh, to, to work that out. Okay, so, so that's a method that's going to be used throughout your higher work. It's all, already introduced in National 5, so that's something that you should know from, from National 5. Okay, let's, let's look at uh, another, another formula that we're going to, going to start using as well. So what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll start thinking about uh, Sokotoa. And if I think about um, Sokotoa from the point of view of this uh, triangle, and if I wanted to work out this angle here, and I'm going to call that angle just X, OK? So that angle X that I'm interested in is this angle here. So that's the angle that the line AB makes with the axis, the OX axis. OK. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to think back to my Sokotoa, my Sokotoa work. And I know that if I label up the triangle opposite the, the right angle here, I'm going to say that that's my hypotenuse up there. Opposite the angle is the opposite side. So that's this side here. And the one that's left is the adjacent. So I'll just label that up with A. Remember when I'm trying to work out Sokotoa, just go for writing it down. Sokotoa. What I'll do then is I'll just tick the, the items that I've got. So I already know the opposite side. So I'll tick the opposite side. I also know the adjacent side, the adjacent side there is 6, so I can tick the A's. And where I've got the two ticks, that's the ratio that I'm going to use. And this is one of the, the formulae that you're going to start using as well. Right, so I'm going to write down the ratio. So what I've got is tan, and I said it was x, so tan x degrees is going to be equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Another name that I could have used for the opposite was the vertical. So I could say that uh, tan x is equal to the vertical, and the adjacent side, this one here, is actually the horizontal side. So that's, that's another way I could, I could mention that. Or because I know that the vertical over the horizontal, remember, equals the gradient, and I'm now using a letter for the gradient, I could then introduce this formula here. Okay, so tan x, the angle that I'm trying to work out, is equal to the gradient. So from that there, I can work out the gradient if I know the angle, or the angle if I know the gradient. So what I can say is it's going to be that formula there, or if I just turn it around, the gradient is equal to tan x. So that's another formula that I'm going to be able to use. So what if I did want to work out the size of this angle that's here? So I'm going to just start straight with working out it from, from here. I already know the, the gradient of that side. So tan x is going to be equal to the gradient. I'm going to then substitute in the gradient, which was 2 over 3. I'm then going to work out what the angle is. And what I'll do is I'll take the inverse tan of 2 over 3. And on the calculator... If I work that one through, I'll get 33.69 uh, degrees, and that's to two decimal places. Okay, so, so that's another 
formula that's been introduced that you will use throughout uh, Hire. Okay, let's move on to looking at uh, parallel lines. So parallel lines, if I can redraw that uh, gradient again, so all I'm doing there is to draw it, I'm just going along 3 and up 2, along 3 and up 2. So from that point there, if I draw that line in, here, okay, that's the line that we started with up above. That would be the line from A to B. I've just extended it that bit further. So for parallel lines, gradient 1 is just equal to gradient 2. So if I draw another line from here, say I start from 0, go along 3, up 2, along 3, up 2, along 3, up 2. So what that should give me there is another line, and it's parallel to that line there. And usually what we would see is we'd see a, a kind of arrow if we see that in some, some diagrams that we see. So these, these lines are the exact same gradient if they're running in the same direction. Okay, so, so that's all I'm going to look at for parallel lines. So let's have a look at uh, perpendicular lines. Okay, perpendicular um, will mean that it's at right angles. So if I was to draw a line at right angles to this one here, let me go for a line that would look something like that there, okay? So I would say that that there is a right angle. Okay. So for perpendicular lines, what I know is that uh, this one here, I've worked out the gradient. I'm going to just call this line M1, okay? And I know that that gradient was 2 over 3. For every 3 I move along, I move up 2. For every 3 I move along, I move up 2. So the gradient is uh, 2 over 3 for that one there. Now one of the, the facts that I know is that the, the gradient, and if I just do a wee perpendicular sign here, so the perpendicular gradient times a gradient that I know, if that equals negative 1, then that tells me that they are at right angles to each other. So let's see, if I was going to try and work out the perpendicular gradient that's here, what I could do is, I'll uh, substitute in the gradient that I know. What I'll do is then I'll divide by 2 thirds, so the perpendicular gradient is going to be equal to minus 1 divided by 2 thirds. And if I just write down what, what I'm actually saying there, I've got minus 1, if I just think about that as 1 over 1, I'm going to divide that by 2 over 3. Remember when we divide, we just uh, flip it over, and we change the sign, and if I multiply that through, minus 1 times 3 will give me minus 3 on the top, and 1 times 2 will give me 2. So, the perpendicular gradient for this line here is minus 3 over 2. Let's just look at it here. So if I'm starting up here, for every 2 that I go along the way, I go down 3. That's a minus 3, so that goes down to there. So what I'm doing is I'm going along 2, and I'm going down 3. Yep, that seems to match there. So if I go along 2, I go down 3. Yep, that's still on the line. Along 2 and down 3. Yep, so that, that looks as though that is the correct gradient for that line there. Now this, this bit of working here is something that I'm not expecting to, to really see. But what I would see is, uh, for perpendicular lines, okay, what I would see is that uh, what you would take is the, if you know the gradient is M1 is equal to 2 over 3, I would expect to see you flip and change. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to flip and change that fraction. So let's go for it. So we'll go for the, the perpendicular gradient. It's going to just be equal to flip the fraction over, 3 over 2, change the sign. So it's a positive there, so it's going to change to a minus. So that's minus 3 over 2 without all that working. 
But beyond that, what I would like you to say is that uh, a wee statement that say that since gradient 1 times gradient 2 equals minus 1. And that there is for perpendicular lines. And that's a simple way of working out your gradient, just flipping it over and changing the sign. Okay, so let me look at uh, one, one final part uh, on gradient. And it's going to be uh, just a small part of differentiation. If I look at the line that I've drawn there, the equation of that line is going to be y is equal to, so the gradient, first of all, 2 thirds x, and I can see it cuts through the point 4, so that would be plus 4 that's there. What I'm going to look at is just differentiation. Very, very simple. I'm not going to get into the theory of differentiation here, but all I want to show you is how that would work out and how I could work out my gradient from there. So if I differentiate dy by dx, so this is at a higher level, that allows me to work out what my gradient equation is going to be for that line. So the gradient equation for this line is just going to be equal to, so remember when we differentiate, all I'm going to do is multiply the 1 power times the 2 thirds, so that'll give me 2 thirds, I'm going to reduce the power by 1, so that'll be x to the 0, which just equals 1. So that's 2 over 3. And this 4 will disappear. And that will be explained when we go into the differentiation topic. So what I can see here is that the gradient, and that's my, my gradient equation, and that shows me that the gradient at any point is going to be 2 over 3 on that line there, just by differentiating straight. Let me do one further example on differentiation, and then that will be enough on the, the gradient topic that we'll do here. Right, so let me look at this, uh, this curve here. So it's a quadratic curve, and the equation of the curve is y is equal to x squared plus x minus 6. Right, what I want to know is I want to know the gradient formula, and I want to work out the gradient on a curve of this type here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate... So it'll be dy by dx, and that's going to be equal to 2x plus 1. And that's going to be my gradient equation. Okay, now that I've worked out the gradient equation, it's my gradient, what I'll do is I'll substitute any x value in there, and what it'll do is it'll tell me what the gradient is at that point. So let's work out what the gradient at the point of x is equal to 1. So if x equals 1, 2 times 1 plus 1 will give me 3. So what that would look like, the gradient where x equals 1, where it hits the curve, should be a gradient something like this here. So that's what that would look like there. That there is a gradient of 3. And that's how I can find it out for the x value on the curve. If I was to try and find out 